channel masking. Basically, it's using a colored channel to create an alpha channel, and then using that alpha channel to create a layer mask. We're going to start with this image here. And in this case, I find that darkening it down a little bit gets uh, better contrast in the channels, so we can get a better result. So I've pulled the exposure down a little bit, and I'm just going to hit Open Image. And the first thing to look for is a color channel that has good contrast between the foreground and the background. So I'm going to go to my Channels panel and take a look through the red channel, there's the green channel, and there's the blue channel. And we're trying to find an image that has a good silhouette, basically a nice contrast between the foreground and the background. And if you look at the red channel here, it's not quite looking like it. You can see there's a lot of grays in the sky, a lot of light tones in the skin. Um, skin tends to come out quite light in the red channel. So let's take a look at the green channel here. Better, but still not quite there. The blue channel, in this case, has the best contrast. You'll often find that with people, the blue channel has the best contrast. Not always, but it tends to be the case. Now, we're going to have to do some pretty awful things to this color channel in order to get the contrast that we need. In order to avoid damaging our color information, I'm going to take this blue channel and make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to either right-click and choose Duplicate Channel, or you can drag the channel onto the new channel icon, and that makes a copy of it. Now, you'll see there's a lot of gray tones in this channel here. We've got some gray in the sky, we've got some gray in the foreground. We need to get rid of that. What we're trying to achieve is a nice black foreground and a white background. Good contrast between the two. Basically a silhouette. Now, it's going to have to be a permanent change. Uh, we can't use an adjustment layer because we're in the Channels panel here. So I'm going to go under Image, Adjustments, Levels. And if we look at the histogram, you can see that we have two little mountain ranges here. We've got one on the left side and one on the right. Now, what part of the image do you think those mountains represent? Let's take a look at the one on the left here. Starts down here on the left side, and what's this? That's our black point. Up here is our white point, and this is our mid-gray. So everything in this mountain range is stuff that's between black and 50% gray. And if we look at the image, well, let's see, we've got a lighter toned sky, dark colors in her. So this is obviously her, the dress, the brick wall, the fence. And up here, what do you think that is? And there's the brighter parts of the image. We've got a lot of gray around here. And that's it over there. We've got a little bit of highlight blowing out around here. The sun's right behind her, so we're losing some stuff there. And we can see that popping off the end of the histogram. We need to get rid of all of that tonality. And here's how we're going to do it. When we move these sliders here, any of the tonality, any of this grayscale information that ends up to the left of the black point will become black. Watch this. As I grab my black point and pull to the right, you can see all the tonality that represented her face, which is all this around in here, filled into black. The farther we go, the darker it gets, the more that black extends. On the other side, when we grab the white point and start pulling it to the left, look at what happens to that sky. All of that grayscale information starts to blow out to white. All of this stuff that represented the sky, the hair, all the lighter areas, blown out to white. Take a look at the interface between the black foreground and the white background. Look at all this grayscale information here, all these gray pixels. These are important. These are what are going to give us a nice soft transition from the foreground to the background, a nice believable shift. If I pull these points too close, take a look at what happens. If I grab the point, black point, pull it up, grab the white point, pull it down, look at what happens to these pixels. This is referred to as aliasing. This is bad. This would give it a very harsh, cut-out sort of look. What we want to do is leave these black and white points as far apart as possible while still giving us a good black foreground and white background. So I'm easing this down until I'm getting a fairly clean edge around. You'll notice there's some gray areas bleeding into the image, and on the dress especially, there's a lot of detail in the flowers. We'll take a look at that later. Don't worry about little things like this on the inside. It's mostly the edge that we're worried about. Now I'm going to hit the OK button. That makes a permanent change to our copy there. Now the next step, I'm going to go back up to my composite channel, my RGB channels, and I'm going to do it by clicking on the letters R, G, and B, not by clicking on the eyeballs. If I just click on the eyeball, it becomes visible, but you'll notice it doesn't become selected. The blue copy is still visible and selected. 
By clicking on the letters R, G, and B, my composite channel becomes selected and the alpha channel disappears. So I'm going to pop back into my layers here and I'm going to create a floating layer by taking this lock and dragging it into the trash. I've unlocked that layer, it's no longer a background layer, and I'm going to give it a layer mask. Just click the new layer mask icon and there it is. Now I'm going to load that alpha channel as a selection. There's a few ways I could do it. I'm just going to go under select, load selection, and it's asking me first off which document I want to use. I've only got one open so it has to be that one. It's asking me which channel I want to use and in this case I've got a few options here. Any of the channels, any of the layers that have a layer mask on them will pop up as a mask or a transparency but in this case because it was the blue channel that we duplicated I'm going to click on blue copy and load it up as a new selection and hit OK. Now you can see I have a selection representing the background or the sky. Simplest thing now is just choose edit, fill. For contents I want to use black and I'll hit OK. And you can see that that hides the background there. Now there will still be a few problems. If I zoom in on the dress here, remember where we saw in the channels there was a lot of grayscale information in there. If we go back to our layer mask, take a look at that. What used to be slightly gray is now light toned. And this is causing the background to show through a little bit. You can see that checkerboard pattern representing transparency. Easiest thing to fix that is simply paint on the layer mask. I've got the layer mask selected. Take my paintbrush, load her up with black paint. Actually in this case white paint. And as I paint with white, you can see those transparent areas disappear. Oops, actually I still have my selection going. Deselect, now I can paint. And there's that problem solved. Um, an easier way might be to take a look at the layer mask directly, option click on it, and just paint over top. A little bit of a cleanup, and there she is, ready to drop onto a new background.